It's little, so it's cute. Geekom is back in the gadget lab. They sent over the Mini Air 11, super small form factor PC for me to take on a test drive and share some thoughts. I loves me a small PC, and I'm a big fan of these little brick designs. I recently reviewed the Geekom Mini IT8, and I've always enjoyed the Intel Nooks. The Mini Air 11 is built on a similar idea and a similar form factor. I think it's hilarious that one of the marketing photos on the Geekom website shows a person putting the Mini Air into their pocket. That's adorable. You're never gonna do that. What matters is price to performance, and I like little Nook clones for being very flexible machines machines with tons of I.O. And they're kind of a perfect first time DIY computer build. The case is easy to pop open, it's just four screws. The compute unit is already pre-installed, but the user can still do things like swap the RAM and the storage, which definitely helps for longevity. It's really easy to buy a little low and then upgrade when you need to. Now the Mini Air uses a lower profile case than the IT8 used, so there is no room for a SATA drive internally, but other than that, we get a similar number of ports. Front face with USB-A, USB-C, and a headphone jack, memory card reader on the side, and a rear panel with USB-A, mini display port, USB-C, HDMI, and Ethernet. And built into the case there are radios and antennas for Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4. It's a total package PC built to be roughly the same profile as a VESA mount. You can take any monitor and turn it into an all-in-one PC with just this little brick kind of popping out the back. That VESA bracket is included in the box, which is a really nice touch. The Mini Air only comes in one configuration using an 11th gen Celeron N5095 with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gig of storage. Windows 11 pre-installed, but you can swap that out for a Linux distro of your choice if you want. That configuration, both good and maybe a little bad. My Mini Air review unit came with one eight gigabyte stick of RAM, which left a RAM slot free. That makes upgrades really easy. I can pop in another eight gig and run dual channel. I'm honestly torn on what would be better, selling the unit with a single eight gigabyte stick or two four gigabyte sticks. Drop me a comment down below. There's a smart target on general purpose computing with this little box. So it's likely many of the people who would use this and really use it for what it is, might not need to ever upgrade from a gig because this is a very good machine at that home computing covering the basics tier. I mean, it's a Celeron with Intel UHD graphics. So that's plenty capable for some office and document work up until you get to moderately intense spreadsheets. It can handle a little low level photo editing. I was using GIMP and I wouldn't try to hit this box too hard with a ton of layers, but I mean, you've seen my YouTube channel thumbnails. This box is plenty capable of getting that done. I really didn't try driving it much harder than that. Like doing my more graphics intense work, video editing and rendering tests, It's a Celeron's just not really built for that. But surfing the web, streaming some 4K video, taking a video call, or hooking up dual displays. There's a respectable amount of function, and I see this fitting in well for those home computing needs, or even potentially as a behind-the-TV solution. Totally not going to game on this natively, but it's at a low enough price tier where it might make sense as an option for game streaming. I was running Shredder's Revenge through Game Pass. That totally works. We live in a world of capable little streaming sticks, and more services are going to smaller consumer tablet-y apps. There are still some times, though, where someone will need the raw functionality of a proper computer, though. And that's where something like this can fill in those compute gaps. I'm very positive on these little PCs, and the Mini Air serves a useful function in low-cost computing. Unlike an Intel Nook, this comes fully ready to use, OS, RAM, and storage installed for $280. At the time this video was shot, it was on sale for $239. That's a healthy amount of computing for the price, and it fits in well for a couple of use cases. We could take a student in a bedroom or a dorm room who doesn't have a lot of space, or maybe an older family member who needs to replace an aging tower, but genuinely does not need 
more compute power. It would just be nice to help them clean up their desk. But I also have to point out that we're at something of a crossroads for consumer electronics. What this box does well, and the kind of use cases where it would work the best, is now falling in line with the advanced use on smartphones and tablets. In fact, some specialty use like editing and rendering 4K video is definitely going to be faster on a premium tier phone. Phones like a Moto Edge Plus, an Honor Magic 4 Pro, or a Samsung Galaxy S have dedicated desktop modes that work like traditional PCs. And the difference in app support versus x86 software support is probably going to be negligible at this price tier. If there's an old Windows program you just have to have, or you wanted to use this box for your favorite Linux distro, then sure. But for the vast majority of this box's intended use, mobile apps are going to be perfectly competitive. The shining advantage of the Mini Air is better I.O. and multi-monitor support. For a sub $300 computer, that's definitely handy. But if you don't need multiple monitors and you're okay buying a laptop hub, you might have a more powerful computer in your tablet or in your pocket already. I just think it's worth pointing out if you spent more on your phone, you could probably be doing more with your phone, but I digress. The Geekom Mini Air 11 is cute. This is a capable little box and it's definitely affordable. We always need good options for covering the basics. And if you need a little more horsepower in a similar shell, moving up to an older Intel Core i5 isn't too much of a price jump now. And Geekom will be selling an IT11 with an 11th gen Core i5 or Core i7. Now we're going a generation older, but that's plenty powerful hardware and you're looking to keep costs from getting too high. I really dig on these little PC builds, and a thank you to Geekom for sending this my way so I could play around with it. I will, of course, leave some links underneath this video for more information on the Geekom Mini Air 11, where you can shop one of these puppies online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you clicking on the links in the descriptions, maybe hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, shopping a little merch, that kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. And of course, the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next review.